I'm an archaeologist, so typically we're used to practice our, our conventional methods and skills and apply them to a legal investigation. I think archaeologists are probably less specialized than other forensic experts. The anthropologist is very good at the human skeleton. The ballistics expert is very good with guns and weapons and bullets. The archaeologist is probably less specialized in one thing, but has a lot of experience and training in a broader range of things. And we're used to looking at dynamics between objects and people and environments. In forensic archaeology, usually the beginning of your role, your task, is to help with a search. We're generally used to assess the landscape and define the area within which we're going to work. That's the first task. The second is to document things as we see them. And then the third step is to recover them. Usually we don't know that much about uh, the case. And so we're going in with our minds open and trying to see whatever it is that we can see to gather any kind of evidence that we recognize and to do it in a way that is systematic, in a way that is uh, defensible and that can be preserved and maintained for in a chain of evidence. Today's viewer is tomorrow's jury member and what they believe from something like a TV show is what they take into court with them and that might be the only knowledge they have of forensic science uh, and they've heard this from professional actors where they then hear it from somebody like myself on the stand and who are they going to believe? Uh, probably the actors and that's what their, their concept is all about and at the back of their mind they probably know it's, it's a bit inflated but reality is that's what, where they've learned their forensic science from and so they take that into the jury room and that can be very very dangerous. The reality is that nine times out of ten at a crime scene different forensic experts are going to be isolated in their own labs. They don't get to talk to one another, they don't get to figure things out, they definitely don't get the chance to go and interrogate witnesses. They provide a small piece of the puzzle and other people who are involved in the investigative process actually put that together. But the other side to it which you know, I sort of commend is that what was considered perhaps science fiction 10 years ago, we're actually doing. And DNA is a really good example of that. I mean, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, if you were saying, oh, we're getting really good DNA from skeletalized remains, it would have been laughed at. And so whilst these shows are sometimes providing expectations that are really unreal, completely unreal, some of what's out there too is actually educating the public in a way that's quite beneficial, it's good. I mean, it's, it's bringing greater awareness about what can be done and perhaps what should be done sometimes. I think the police are finally realising that insects are evidence and we can use them in a death investigation. And once one police officer has seen a case that I've done and seen how useful it's been in court, then everybody says, hey, well, I'm going to try that too. And suddenly there's an explosion. Everybody wants to, to start using this. So when you tell a police officer that the insects on the body, which to him are just something gross and disgusting, and they're in the way of his evidence, you tell that police officer that uh, he or she could actually get a time of death from those insects, they're very pleased. If the police have six suspects in a homicide and I can tell them when death took place, that might eliminate four of them right up front.
Thank <laughs> you.